What's happening everybody? Welcome back to a brand new month of sneaker releases. It's your money, I'm not your funny. It is time for November 2020. Now I personally think this month is jam-packed with a lot, a lot of goodies. October was hectic. Q4 quarter, the fourth quarter for Nike is typically always, 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 always one of the best quarters. Either quarter four or the first quarter tends to be the bank. More like the second quarter, more or less. But we are here to break down this month's sneaker release. So we're going to break down retail prices, resale prices, how hard of it is it going to be a cop and uh what tier stores will, will they be at high tier boutiques will they be at mid-tier gr retro retailers which includes your typical foot lockers foot actions snipes finish lines all that other shenanigans or are they going to be your uh stupid well we really don't break down the stupid low tier releases but we typically just focus on the most hyped and most profitable ones to come out for this month now if you guys want remember october just a mere few days ago uh we left off with the jordan one mochas that was the last release of the month and it was an absolute banger now if you guys want to get your free pair uh we're giving away a pair for free make sure you guys check out our instagram page at timeboy tv plus we're giving away a free pair of mochas i think they're gonna be sizes 11 or 10 if i'm not mistaken uh then we're gonna be giving away two free monthly memberships at timeboy tv plus as well so make sure you guys check it out we haven't done a giveaway in a minute i apologize for that we were doing one every single month covid caught on to us our 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 door got burnt out the establishment so we couldn't get a lot of good pairs for you guys but we are back in back in action back in business and we're going to turn up fully for the rest of this year uh so without further ado we're going to pop open the green screen and get right into it and first up on the list, we're going to quickly just briefly go over the Nike Air Max Plus dropping in the white and red colorway. It was supposed to be the first release we were going to see in all of November come out of any really big brand, which was going to be November 1st. However, if you actually go back onto the news page on the website, it is actually got pushed back. It was officially slated for November 1st on their news and blog, on their Instagram posts and all that other shenanigans. But unfortunately, it is getting pushed back to a later date that is unspecified. So I'm sure they're going to announce when it will be, but just keep an eye out for this release. Retails $180, if I'm not mistaken. Reese on the white pair, I'm sure, is going to be very, very decent in the green. And both the green and the freaking black pair shot up like crazy to over $300, which is, it's just, which is honestly pretty wild to see. Uh, but the actual official release date that we do have is the Nike Dunk Low Veneer. Now, these had already dropped in October via exclusive access. And these are supposed to come out in accordance with the other Nike Dunk Low called the Sur ceramic it was supposed to be like the whole pack but it looks like the ceramic will be following the veneer at a different release date uh once again november 10th retails 100 us dollars the cheapest retail you can get from really any hype nike shoe at the end of the day and it is the dunk wave <laughs> excuse my voice uh but the SKU code is da1469-200 this will be available on nike sneakers app uh probably hopefully nike sneakers pass we have sneakers pass we saw come back on mochas the early the group knew about that early 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 very early actually considering of, of what actually went down uh but reese on this pair i assume to be holding steady around 250 dollars it's very similar to to the plum release that we did see a few months ago it has a whole washed out vintage color and it's a re-retro of what came out in the past absolutely 100 percent a cop next we go on to the 11th of November, which is the Nike SB Dunk Low Atmos quote unquote elephant print. A reason why I did a little bit of air quotes right there is because it is not an official Atmos collaboration. It is instead just going to be using the iconic print that they do use from the Air Maxes that they did collab with Atmos on a minute ago. Uh, retail on this pair is expected to be around 100 to 120 US dollars, depending on the skate shop. Some shops charge over uh, MSRP suggested retail price uh, just because they can. That's uh, literally what they can do. I know some shops around me do charge about 20 to 40 dollars on. On top of a pair nothing too crazy like i'll pay that i support a small local business i don't really care i know some people get pissed off about it. i'm like bro you're touching like what a 400 plus dollar shoe like you know just be a little generous at it it's not a big deal and it won't kill you uh but this shot this shoe will be available at your local skate shop and in order to check that out make sure you go to nikesb.com forward slash shops and you guys can look at any local shops and you might sure support them even when they don't have any hyped sbs uh, now reselling this pair is looking steady around 400 dollars at the moment i see it dropping a bit more to 300 dollars. but realistically i don't think a lot of kids that are in the dunk wave right now that are here for travis scott are really here for this print just because it's like an OG, it's definitely an og iconic print i 100 100 know where it comes from 100 
respects where it comes from, but I just don't feel like the real Dunk audience at the moment really does care for this print. Unfortunately, that's just my take on it. Next on the 11th of, now I gotta tell you, the 11th of November is a huge, huge day. We also have the Kyrie Preheat Collection dropping on the sneakers app and supposedly might be coming out a little bit of free, a price tag of zero dollars, uh, depending if you get it. There's gonna be like a whole little, uh, I think, mystery drop with it, probably some exclusive access, probably some scratch stuff going on. If they do bring back the scratch, I think it'd be fire as hell. Uh, but it looks like they were on Stinkers app. They already do have it loaded up. It's uh, for creativity inspired colorways. The Kyrie 7 will drop mystery box style via Sneakers. That's exactly what they say on the Sneakers app. Of course, stay tuned to the Sneakers app on how to go about getting it. But there's about one, two, three, four different shoes dropping in this pack. And typically, if you cop a pair, I'd say quick sell it right away. If you're here for the resale aspect of it, don't bother holding any type of Kyrie's. Then we go on to the 11th of November also, which we do have the 350 V2 Fade, also known as, with the SKU code, HQ2795. Um, my honest take on this shoe, it's, it's going to do numbers. I feel like it will do really, really good numbers. We just came off the natural release, and those base sizes are doing the moon. I said only focus on base sizes, men's size are not worth that, and that's exactly what happened. This time around, we'll have a full how to cop guide separately for the main shoes of this month. By the way, if you guys didn't know, make sure to subscribe button and notification bell if you want to stay notified for when that does happen. Uh, but these uh, I see doing relatively well in base sizes. Once again, all the easiest typically do well in base sizes. Uh, it does take longer for some color rates to appreciate over time, but still, I always think it's a safe bet to buy up pairs in them. Uh, now, retail is $220. Once again, release will be on Easy Supply, Adidas, and is expected to be at other select retailers as well, ranging from your foot, foot apps, your full locker foot actions, all the way up to your high tier stores like Kith and Concepts. Then we go on to the 11th, that was supposed to be, rumored to be, the Air Jordan 1 Trophy Room. Now, sorry to tell you, but the man behind Trophy Room, Michael Jordan's son, or if I'm not mistaken, his son, confirmed it today. Uh, that there will be no, there's no Jordan collapse slated for the ending of 2020. I have no idea what I just said. But the ending of 2020, there's no trophy room and Jordan collapse slated. Unfortunately, it's some tragic news because these shoes are looking crazy. Maybe it'll be coming out in 2021, but at the moment, it's loaded up on GOAT. There are some asks up there on GOAT right now for like $1,400. I don't think that's a bad price considering how early the shoe could be. Uh, I'm going to go ahead has it up there. So it has to be a real shoe. It has to be coming out at some time. He did specify not 2020. So maybe like spring 2021. It would be dope to see the shoe come out. But if it does, I'm assuming it'll be very similar to the Jordan 5s. And the way those came out was only Trophy Room's website. I remember that day like it was yesterday on the path train headed to New York City. And of course, you got your dreaded Nike sneakers. Now, following that, we do have on the November 12th, we have the Air Jordan 5 What The. Now, these did also come out about a week ago via exclusive access. I personally did pick up a pair, so they'll be coming for you guys this week via in-hand review. This will be dropping in men's and GS sizes. Men's is retailing for $220. If I'm not mistaken, GS should be retailing for approximately $180 US dollars or possibly even $200. Which is stupid, stupid expensive for GS sizes, but I'm honestly, I think I'm mistaken on that one. Uh, once again, it's your iconic Jordan 5. Retros have been popping lately, once again, because of The Last Dance. I feel like that hype is fading away, and it clearly is as time and time goes on. I feel like Jordan Brand took high advantage of what was going on with the whole Jordan Brand hype, and I think at this point... It's hard. It's going to be hard for them to sell a lot of Jordan Retros at this point. But this one, I don't think is going to fall that route. I think this is going to sell stupid, stupid quick. The What The colorway is iconic with Nike. Everyone knows. I mean, you should at least know what What The is. It's really uh, grab inspirations from different shoes that are different colorways in the same shoe. And that's exactly what they did with the Fives. And I know they have more uh, What The coming out soon on different silhouettes as well. So this is just the beginning. I feel like... From Nike, and absolutely, and you're going to be, I mean, to wear this for the toe, it's going to be a little bit difficult, but I think to resell, I think you're going to be bound to make good-ass profits. Then on to November 13th, we do have the Nike Dunk High Platinum, which is, I'm not too hyped for it. It's your basic-ass look at Nike Dunk with in just a white colorway with a silver swoosh. Base sizes, I see being absolutely going to the moon. Retail is expected to be $120. Base sizes, I, be, I see being a great, great sale, just because, once again, it it looks like a great, easy-to-wear shoe for women. Now, once again, it looks like something you could have found on Nike outlets four years ago for probably like $40, $60. Uh, well, the market ain't like that no more, unfortunately. So it is what it is. And now we'll be going to November 13th as well. We do get to see the Nike Sakai collaboration come out for the Vapor Waffles, which has been 
rumored, leaked, literally for, I want to say, over a year. It's been quite some time since we have seen anything come out from Nike Sakai. Retailers just about two weeks ago did release the apparel stuff from this collection. Uh, now, retail and the actual shoes is expected to be $180. US dollars. Now, for the EU and Asian boys, that might have sounded a bit weird, but they're releasing on the 6th for you guys. I think at most regions. I know for uh, my own country, they're dropping on the 6th out there in Western Europe. Uh, and I know Sakai does have a raffle open. I might even end up being closed by now. Of course, the PM group didn't know about that uh, and entered this morning. Now, going on to the 14th list, 11th, 12th, 13th, 14th are jam-packed days. And on the 14th, as of right now, it's slated to, we get to see the Air Journal 1 Midnight Navy Co. Japan. Uh, the shoe is literally almost at retail price. Which I'm kind of shocked as to why. Because I think it does look a lot better than the silver colorway that we did see out of the Co. Japan collection. Uh, about a month and a half ago, we did see in September, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, once again, dropping in men's and GS sizes. I see men's sizes being absolute cop. Along with men's sizes, I see them being great great investments it's a jordan one it will sell out it just market isn't there at the moment i know men's press are like 240 230 which is ridiculously low right now for any type of jordan one we haven't seen a jordan one drop that low in i want to say about like ooh, seven eight months like bloodlines i can think of like the last shoe that really did drop that low and that shoe's over 220 dollars in most sizes at the moment uh then we go on to the 14th of november which is the yeezy 700 v3 sunflower not sunflower i thought it was sunflower but it's sunflower i think that's how you want to pronounce it. Dropping in men's, infant, and kid sizes on Adidas at NeezySupply.com. Once again, a 700 V3 shoe. Everyone goes crazy over it. It's uh, very anticipated and highly, highly sought after silhouette. They don't drop them too often, like once every month or once every two months. And it's always worth being the whole. So I recommend holding this shoe if you do get your hands on it. But once again, we'll have a full separate review on this specific release. $200 retail. I see resale prices holding up at over $400. Just because we haven't seen a yellow Yeezy come out in quite i don't think i can i can't recall if any is actually having a very bright yellow color right on it besides like piss yellow freaking you know linens or whatever the hell they were then on to the 21st we jump ahead a full week on november is the nike sv dunk high concepts millard now this shoe uh, it, it does not look good to me i can tell i don't like this shoe at all i don't like the way it looks the special box though is killer i think concepts always is known for their special box they did live up to the hype this time around they did drop a fire fire special box um right now they did preview the shoe they always do right for the local customers so if you're local to either boston or new york i do think you'll have quote unquote a decent chance of copying expect to get crazy uh but once again it's a dunk high not as soft as the dunk lows and it really isn't part of their lobster collection which is what everyone loves out of concepts that's just like their one spin-off onto the whole thanksgiving vibe of the dunk but it'll definitely sell out quick it'll definitely be profitable so 100 worth the cop just not only worth the toe in my opinion and retail is once again gonna be 120 us dollars and as of right now they're up on stock and i think they're selling yeah they're selling for they haven't sold at all uh below us ask setup are up over two thousand us dollars uh, then we go to the 21st of November as well. We get to see the Air Jordan 3 Court Purple, which was rumored to be canceled for the uh, entire international release. And now it's saying that's only going to be EU and Asian specific regions that will get to see this release. I don't know for sure at the moment how it's going to go, but that's the rumor as it is right now. Uh, I do think it definitely should see a US release just because it's the Court Purple aspect. Kind of reminds you, like, kind of has like that whole Lakers vibe to it. Just how the Laser Orange Jordan 3s did about a month ago when they did drop uh, i do think they're solid shoes as well if you can cop them overseas i definitely recommend bringing them over to the u.s just because i think the jordan threes as a fire silhouette that always always does go up over time it just takes a long long time as it does like for jordan fours jordan threes and jordan 11s those are all solid three shoes that are solid to invest in if you have a lot a lot of capital it makes sense too but if you don't have a lot of capital it doesn't make sense to go crazy over them then on to the 27th of November, we get to see the Nike Kobe Bruce Lee and Bruce Lee alternative colorways come out, which was supposed to, well, it was slated to come out, I know, on sneakers and stuff, they're the, like the only retailer that did load them up about two months ago, and after that, they pulled them within like two hours of posting it, and nothing else was heard of. Now, officially, it looks like they're going to be dropping on November 27th. Now, where you can go out and cop a pair, it's going to be your typical high to retailers like Concepts, Nia, Kith, literally sns and clothing and nike sneakers like it's gonna be your basic high retailers and your select high end and when i mean jordan stores i mean your chicago l uh chicago and la locations for the jordan jumpman store 
Uh, 100% worth the cop, but you do you if you want to resell Kobe's. I ain't going to talk much about it. Uh, but definitely a look fire ass color in my opinion. Definitely a very collectible item. Then on to the 28th of November, we get to see the official real release date of the Jordan 4 Fire Red 2020 versions. If you didn't know, literally uh, exactly a month ago from this release date, we did get to see the Jordan 4 Fire Red uh, Shock Drop, uh, Share of Shock Drop. No exclusive access, group was notified. We were on top of it. We only took W's out of all four accounts on GS sizes. I don't know how that happened. We were on, we were literally on it instantaneously, but it is what it is. Retails 200, 200 US dollars. I see resale prices dropping around 230, 240. If you have early pairs, I would wait it out just to about a week before release and sell them around then or sell right after the stinkers L's. But yes, the Jordan hype is fading away, but this is a Jordan 4 that everyone loves. The color is on point. You got Nike hair on the back. And you really can't go wrong with this shoe at all. Local sales are going to be busting to the moon. Uh, app sales are going to be up there. And if you want to hold it, I'd see recommend. It wouldn't be a bad idea to hold it. But once again, only if you have a lot, a lot of capital. Then on to the 28th of, of November, we also get to see the Yeezy 380 Onyx release, dropping in a non-reflective and reflective version. Uh, $230 is this expected retail price, and this might be one of the only times it's actually worth to cop a Yeezy 380 sneaker, just because it's triple black. Every single triple black Yeezy always ends up doing really, really well, no matter what color it is. I mean, how kind of color it is, what type of silhouette it's on, it always ends up doing well. And I think people like the 380 shoe. Just the colors have been terrible lately. Absolutely terrible. Ever since the first ones came out, those were doing good. But every single color after that was just whack and it just not it at all. And now that this Onyx colorway, I see demand going up there because it's actually something a lot easier to wear. Uh, definitely worth the cop in my opinion in all sizes. Then on to the 30th, one of the last releases we get to see of this month is a Jordan 1 High OG Black Gold Patent. I personally do like this shoe a lot. It's the high cut. It's a very, very high cut. It's patent though, so I'm not the biggest fan of patent. Wouldn't wear it for the toe, but ever since that Complex Con exclusive pair came out and then I ended up re-releasing that whole black, white, and gold pair, I'm just a big fan of the black, gold, and then patent material. I think as a collectible standpoint, looking at it on the shelf, I think it looks great. Toe-wise, it kind of reminds me of like a shoe that would have ended up on discount about four years ago. It looks like a mid or like a yin-yang. Reminds the yin-yang collection that was kind of like sitting on shelves. Wasn't doing anything too crazy. It reminds me of a mid as well. So I don't see the hype going too wild on these like at first. But over time, I do see prices picking up steam. Just how the last pair did that came out, I think, if I'm not mistaken, about two years ago. Now, the officially last release of this month is a re-release of the Adidas EC500 Utility Black, dropping for 200 US dollar retail. Prices right now are looking pretty, pretty decent. Uh, there's nothing any, there's no difference between this shoe. Holy shit, prices are high as hell. They're over 500 US dollars in almost every single size. Now, there's not going to be any single difference between the first release and the re-release, so... I expect Go and StockX to have different listings, but in reality, up close and personal, there's not going to be any difference besides probably the manufacturing tag showing different dates of production, and that's probably honestly just about it. Expect an Adidas release and an Yeezy, Yeezy Supply release. Not sure if they'll be at any retailers because typically when they do restock or re-release pairs, they don't really end up going at too, too many retailers. Now, some pairs that are still slated to release is your Nike SB Dunk Low Chicago's. Uh, those are st starting to pop up more and more at US Skate Shops. So make sure you tap in with your local skate shop for that. If you want to find out where to cop a pair, you go to nikesb.com forward slash shops and you find a shop near you and stay tuned to their Instagram. Don't bother calling, don't bother emailing because they'll post it as soon as they can if they don't backdoor their pairs. Uh, now, once again, as I mentioned previously, the Nike Dunk Ceramic is a dunk that we still have yet to see come out. It was supposed to come out in September, then October, and now we're back here in November waiting for an official release date. Then we also got the Nike SB Inverted Celtics, which is as of right now, released in Australia and New Zealand, starting to come over in the EU, and I think eventually by the end of this month or beginning of December, we might end up seeing a US release for this shoe, but it might end up just getting pushed back to only Asia and EU retailers at the moment. Uh, then we also have the Air Force One Paranoise. I'm still not giving up on this shoe we talked about in the last uh, shoes to resell in the month preview video, and then we're going to talk about it once again. I don't think it's a fire ass paranoia shoe. It's a white with black swoosh. Can't go wrong with it. And it's a high tier collaboration. Definitely worth the cop. When will it come out? Truth be told, it's still TBA because it was supposed to come out last month. Looks like it got delayed, and hopefully, expect a November release date for it. Now, as of right now, that's just about it for what's coming out in November. Hope you guys enjoyed it. It's going to be an absolute movie. If you guys haven't checked the group, make sure you guys check us out on Instagram and Twitter, Timeboy TV on Twitter, Timeboy TV Plus on Instagram, and of course, the subscribe button. I really, really do appreciate it. Stay notified and tuned in, tapped in for when we do drop more how to cop guides and all those other types of videos. I'll catch you guys then. Peace.